Okay, here we are in MathCAD. Let's take a look at the solution to the rocket problem before we move on to MATLAB. Now you can see that this top row, I've got all my units, or all my constants, I guess, defined, and I've got all the units in there. One of the real strengths of MathCAD Prime is it's very good at handling units. You can type in unit uh, numbers in whatever units you happen to know. It converts everything to metric internally, I think, and it'll spit them out in whatever units you want. So that if I want G in, I don't know, feet per second squared, there it is. I guess I could do miles per second squared. Yeah, how about miles per year squared? Yeah, there it is. So if you want G in, I don't know, cubits for square fortnight or something, we would, it'll probably do that. And since this is a separable differential equation, I went ahead and just typed out the integral. So there it is. Now, this is being evaluated numerically, the way I've got it set up right now. And to just double check an answer, I checked what delta V was after a thousand seconds. I get 1277 meters per second. Maybe I'll make this plot a little bigger too. Use up as much of the screen as I can in case you're watching on a small screen. So there it is. And you can see this is pretty straight, but not exactly straight. The reason being the mass is changing, but it's not changing very much. But without changing anything else, let's say I had a really inefficient engine and the fuel flow rate was higher than uh, four kilograms per second, maybe it was six. You can see that the curvature is increasing down here. Well, let's keep going. Let me make it eight. And you can see that as we go farther and farther, this line gets closer and closer to vertical. Well, that's because if we had, let's say we had uh, M dot is 10 kilograms per second. At a thousand seconds, we had a mass of zero and a thrust that's not zero. And this would go vertical. It would be infinite. So that makes physical sense. We can uh, have some confidence in that answer. Now, I mentioned that mu pad didn't do too well with this solution. Let me change one thing here. I'm going to put a symbolic equal, and there's the answer I get. Let me move this down for you. There's the answer I get right there. It's wanting to take the natural log of a negative number, which you can do. Um, it's complex, but you can do it. But the answer doesn't mean anything physical. I messed around trying to get it to not do that, and I, I, I couldn't. Or if there's a way, I don't know what it is. So numerically, it's happy. Symbolically, not too happy. All right, with that out of the way, let's go over to MATLAB. All right, we've moved over to MATLAB now, and I've done a little bit of prep work. Let's go ahead and try to run this symbolically. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to the command history and just execute sims like I did before. And then I'm going to define dv. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and integrate. Just type in int. So I'm going to execute that command again. And here we have that same problem again. Now, two things to note. One is that in MATLAB lingo, log is natural log. If you want the common log or base 10 log, it's actually the, the, the function is called log 10. So let's say t is 1 right here. So that means m dot times t is 4 minus m, which is 10,000. Once again, I'm trying to take the log of a negative number. Now, I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, it might have something to do with that negative sign up front. So bottom line is just blindly firing this problem at the symbolic processor isn't going to work. Let's clear. Let's try plan B here. Now, a big part of what we're trying to do here is learn how finite difference approximations work for differential equations. So I've written a little routine called rocket.m. Seemed like a good name, and it wasn't being used by MATLAB. So rather than have you watch me type all this stuff back in, here it is. And let me walk you through it so you can see what you're looking at. So I clear the screen, and right there is all the constants I need. M dot is 4. Mass is 10,000, thrust is 10,000. Now, I need a dt. Remember, this is a finite different solution. dt is a number, and we know what it is. Because the curvature doesn't change very fast, because the slope doesn't change very fast, I guess, um, I said dt equals 10. 
that seems like a reasonable first guess. And I said, T final is a thousand. I'm just hardwiring in a thousand seconds and uh, have to count the number of points I need. So that's T final over DT. And do two other things here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign my initial condition. So V1 equals zero, because remember all I'm looking for is delta T. As long as I'm not accelerating, it doesn't matter what the initial velocity is. And then I made a vector of T's right here. So inside this loop, all I've done is code that last line on the board before. So at every for every time T sub N, you can see there's T sub N right there. I know V sub N. I know what the first one was because it's defined right there. And every time I go through this loop, I just define the next one. So I can march forward as long as I know the current time and the current velocity, I can find the next velocity. And I know what all the times are up front because it's a, a uniform time step. So right here, this is the guts of the program. That's the part that's doing the finite difference approximation to the differential equation. You can see how simple this is. Now it's important to note, this thing is something called a forward difference. Uh, there are There is such a thing as a backwards difference. In fact, there's also a central difference. The forward and backward differences are important because of stability concerns. For right now, forward difference is where it's at. Now just to check against the uh, number I, oops, the number I got from MathCat, I figured I'd spit out the very last velocity you calculated and did the plot. So there's some extra stuff on the plot here you may not have seen before. I'm plotting velocity versus time. B right there is just make the line blue. Now in the past, I've rather than defining line within the plot command, I did it manually. Well, I'm getting tired of that. So what, what this does right here is this sets the line width to two. If you go back a couple of videos, when I was messing around with editing plots on the screen, I would double click to get the uh, property inspector and manually put in two for the line width. Well, you don't have to do that. You can put it in the plot command if you want. Turn the grid on and I label the axis and hit return. So all I've got to do now is hit run. And there's my plot. I'll try to make this big here so you can see it. And that looks about right. I think it looks like, like it matches what I saw on the math CAD plot. And what was the velocity? 1273.7, I think. Okay, well, that's close. It was 1277 before. Well, if we can assume that the integrator in math CAD gave us the exact answer, and that's, that's a good assumption, why didn't this one match? Well, dt is awfully big. Let's shrink this down. Remember the number I'm looking for is 1277. So 127064, I think. So I've changed dt, I've decreased it. Let's run it again. And now I get almost 1277, 1276.7. Pretty close. Well, can I keep going? Let's make it 0.1. And yes, there you go, 1277.0 something. Well, at that point, I don't care anymore. I've got the right answer. So all I have to do to get an accurate answer out of the finite difference solution is just make dt small enough. dt does not have to be infinitesimal. It just has to be small enough that the approximation is close enough to give us an accurate answer. Now, because the slope doesn't change very fast in this problem, dt doesn't have to be especially small. Now, we're at 1,000 seconds and dt is 0.1, so there's 10,000 time steps in this. this. This is a large number of time steps. But this line right here is so easy to calculate, it hardly matters. So that's called a forward difference approximation. And just to uh, see what happens here, let's make this 8 again. And see what that curve looks like. And again, you can see the... And you can see the curvature is getting larger as the fuel flow rate goes up. The reason being, again, that uh, we're re decreasing the mass of the rocket by a larger amount while the thrust is staying constant. So, of course, the acceleration is going to go way up. Okay, just to summarize what we've done here. So we've explored the problem in MathCAD and simply just integrated. 
well, right here, just since this is a, a, a separable equation, we're just going to integrate to find the answer. You can do that in this problem, but in uh, separable differential equations are rare. And when we messed around with the fuel flow rate to see what happens, and it behaves as we guessed it would, I mean, it makes physical sense. So we went over to MATLAB and showed a little function that uses a forward difference approximation to solve this differential equation, this initial value problem. So I hope that helps, and we'll talk to you next time.